we've been in a series. Um, I, I, I'm, in a, I'm in a grandfather mode right now, okay? I got this grandfather anointing on me because I'm seeing my grandkids graduate and do proms and um, I'm sending up burnt offerings for the after prom and all that and stuff. Um, you know what I'm saying, you know? Yeah, yeah, because I remember mine. But anyway, um, so I'm, you know, I'm seeing my kids gradu- go to these next seasons and as a grandfather, as a grandfather, like, like some of you guys as mother and fathers, I'm saying, wow, wow, uh, did I tell her this? You know, did I teach her this? That, mm, wish I'd said that. I forgot, you know. And as I, as I um, uh, am I'm transitioning, as I'm moving into this new season of my life where I'm, I'm not retiring, I'm repositioning. So y'all stop telling folks that I'm going to the south side of the pasture and going out to pass and all that kind of stuff. I am repositioning. But I look back on 40 years, 4-0, 40 years of being here. I've been at this church over half of my life, okay? 40 years, 40 years I've been here. I'm 74 years old, and I've been here most of my life. And I'm, so now, now I'm, I'm saying, wow, I wish I had said that, and I forgot. Oh, wow, did, did I say that? And it's funny because some of the stuff uh, I didn't know I said, and I forgot that I said it. Um, no, that's all right. You keep living. You're going to start forgetting some stuff too. You know what I'm saying? So, so I'm in this thing. Wow. You know, I, and I'm looking at my grand, grandkids and I'm saying, wow, I wish I had told them this. I wish I had told them that, you know, and they, they're about to go off to college and stuff. And so I, I have been pondering, pondering these last several weeks. Uh, did, did I tell you this? Did, did I teach you this? Um, did, did, did I preach about that? Did I deal with that passage? And and I, uh, I'm, the, the Lord, this issue that we've been dealing with for the last few weeks, the Lord has laid it on my heart um, because I'm wondering what kind of uh, people uh, am I passing on? Um, what, what's the ethos? What, what kind of atmosphere, what kind of mindset are we as it relates to who God has called us to be? And so, uh, for the last several weeks, we've been wrestling with what we've called the rainbow elephant in the room, uh, this issue of the LGBTQ community and what the church has said and most of what the church has not said uh, in the face of that reality. So here's where we are. Today and next week, I want to wrap up this series, watch this now, on love Grace, beauty, blessings, and truth. Love, grace, blessings, and truth. L G B T. And and I want to do it. Um, I'm going to wrap it up this uh, today and next week. Today I want to emphasize. So what is God saying to us as a people, as a church? And then next week, I want to wrap it up with what is God saying to the SSA Christian? Did you get that? The same-sex attracted Christian. What is God saying to the SGA, the same gender attracted Christian? And I, and I want to do that in the context of, of who God and what God has called us to be. Um, I... Um, I want to establish and reestablish uh, where I'm coming from, okay? Um, I, 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 I am unapologetically um, and yet with a sense of clarity, I want to I wanna, I wanna confirm that I'm coming from a bibliocentric, theocentric, Christocentric perspective, okay? Um, and I say that because I acknowledge that, that, that if, you, if, you don't, if you don't espouse that theological position, then glad to have you, thank you for coming, but I'm just saying it right now, some of, if not most of what I'm gonna say won't make sense, 
okay? Uh, what do I mean? If you, if you are still dealing with deity and, and you're an agnostic, we are so honored to have you with us today. Thank you so much for coming. But just know that if that's where you are theologically, philosophically, most of what I say won't make sense. Be because I'm, I'm trying to come from a, a position that affirms, listen, that affirms the Lordship of Christ that affirms the authenticity and the authority of the word of God. And so um, I, I want to clarify that, okay? Uh, because if, 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 if we don't start from that common ground, then obviously we're not going to go very far. But, but I want to share, I want to share um, a, a burden on my heart. Not just after 40 years of being here with you, but after all of my life almost being in the church. Um, that's where I'm coming from. And many times the discussions, the few discussions, that, that's a whole other conversation about the lack of conversation. But many times the few discussions about this, this topic and this issue are focused on them. See? Uh, them and, and what they ought to be doing and not, do, not doing. I want to deal today with what is God saying to us. And the next, the next week I want to get to what, what God is saying to you if you're a part of this um, community. Now listen, um, I, I, I've said to some of you, I'm, 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 I, can't, I can't say it all. I can't tell all this. And so this is going to be, this is gonna be the topic of my next book. Okay, my, I think my 13th, 14th, here it is, my next book. And for the first time, I'm, I'm asking for, uh, for co-writers, I'm, I'm asking for contributors, and I'm looking for stories. And so if you are uh, in this community, if you are uh, impacted by this community, if you are a son or a daughter, um, how did it? What is your story relative to your parents? If you're a parent, how have you dealt with your children? Um, I want to know your story. Now, let me help you. Let me help you. Um, you can't tell it all. All right. Uh, let, let, let this not be your autobiography. Okay. Uh, the kind of serial you like when you were a little kid, I really don't care about that. Okay. But, but I want to know, and, I, and I'm going to give you a few guideline questions as to how to write it. Um, no, no, no pressure, nothing. But if, but if you write it, listen to me now. If you respond, and I'm going to let you know next Sunday, uh, we're going to put together a, a website or whatever, and I'm going to let you know. Now listen, if you're the kind of person where you're going to get upset if I don't use your thing, don't put it in. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, I, 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 you can't tell it all and I can't use it all, all right? So we may use excerpts, we may use quotes out of it, whatever. Um, but seriously, I, 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 don't, I don't want you to get upset with me. I can't. It, it ain't your book. You ain't writing the book. It's my book. I'm like, I got to say all this, y'all, because I'll be getting letters and emails. Eh? So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, okay? So I'll give you all that information next week. I'll let you know about that. Today, today, I want to I wanna wrestle with, I want to wrestle with uh, an attempt to synthesize the biblical reality, the truth of sin, and the love of the Savior, and the power of the Spirit of God. Okay? Uh, the reality, the truth of sin. I'm letting you know right now, I'm coming from a bibliocentric perspective. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm standing on the authority of the word of God as, as, as we interpret it, as I receive it. And so in, let me just start, in the word of God, there is, a, there is such a thing as sexual sin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's going to be a rough day, I see that right now. I just lost half y'all right there, okay? Cool. So that's where I'm coming from. Now, by the way, there's such a thing as, as, as sexual sin, hetero and homo. Y'all, please don't make me work too hard today, okay? I'm, I'm tired. Okay, yeah, work with me, okay? So, there, sin is a reality. Now, and then what? See? 
in terms of reality. And, and there's a, the, the biblical truth is that there is, there is sin. There is sin. A holy God, a holy God responds to sin, the unholiness. Okay, I'm going to start there. And I'm going to start there because that is going to apply to all of us. Except this section right here. It ain't going to apply to nobody. Ain't going to apply to nobody on that side over there. Get to the spiritual folk on this side. So, so I say that because that's going to be the common ground. You see what I'm saying? Okay. And th then we're going to see what is God saying to us. It dawned on me. It dawned on me. Literally just a few days ago, it dawned on me that the LGBT community is a community stay with me you, the, the, the bus phrase is the LGBT community you know and we hear the movement and all that kind of stuff but but the, the buzzword the buzzword uh, is community um, a place where where people are drawn to because they are accepted for who they are. They don't feel judged. They're affirmed. They're accepted. They're acknowledged. They, have, they, are, they are given value. They, their value is added and, and affirmed in their lives. They're encouraged. See? And then it dawned on me. People in that community are drawn to that community because it's a safe place. Um, it's a place where, where, where they don't feel judged for being who they are. It, it's a place of, of love. It's a place of blessing. It's a place of grace. It's, it, it's a place of, of, of affirmation. And then it dawned on me, that's what the church is supposed to be. A duh. That's what the church is supposed to be. A community where you are affirmed, where you are accepted, where you are encouraged, where you have a safe place. Now let's go to work. Come with me to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Pick me up at verse 7. Lord, help me today. Romans chapter 15. All right, all of that was for free. Okay, that was the introduction. All right. Romans chapter 15. Here we go. Pick me up at verse 7. Accept one another then. One version says receive. Okay. Uh, here's, here's the phrase. Underline this. Highlight this. Uh, put a circle around it. Put parentheses around it. Put a circle around it. Here it is. Accept them. Just as Christ accepted you. I highlight that part. Accept them just as Christ accepted you. In order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of, of God's truth to confirm promises made to the patriarchs so that, here it is, the Gentiles, so that they may glorify God for his mercy. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing hymns to our na your name. Look at me. He's saying this. You accept them so that they can join in in singing praises to God. I'll give it to you again. You accept them, receive them. And the result of that is they will join you in singing praises to God. You with me? God says, you accept them the way I have accepted you. The, the word church means, the word church ek means out of, call. You are called out of. Listen now. The word, the word church means to be called out, the called out ones. We are called out of culture. We are called out of the world into the kingdom of God. Now listen to me. We are called out to be placed into the body. One more time. We are called out of the world to be placed into the body of Christ. We are called out to be placed in. And, and, we're, and, and in doing so, we live counterculture. We, li we live antithetically to the principles and priorities and values of the world. And we are now in the, in, in, in the context of the kingdom of God. 
And so we live our life, listen to me, with a new identity. That's why that song they just, that, that presentation, presentation was just so, so valuable. Over and over they said, I am, I am, and every I am had a passage to it. Because it affirms their identity. Now watch this. So that when I become, when, 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 I, when I accept Christ as my Lord and Savior, I become a part of a community and my identity changes. The, the essence of who I am is always in relationship to my God. I said it too fast, you miss it. The essence of who I am, my, my identity is relation, relational to my relationship with God. I am, all they say, I am God's child. I am fearfully made. I am blessed o- over and over again. My, listen to me, my identity changes. The essence of everything I am other than that I am is secondary. Don't rush past that. Everything else I am is an adjective. My noun is a child of God. If if I get that in my spirit, my whole life will change. My whole perspective on life will change. Now listen to me. When, 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 When God receives me and saves me and places me in his kingdom, listen to me. He places me in relationship to other believers. You still with me? He, he places me in relationship to other believers. So that, so that, so that, Paul, Paul writes over and over, he says, in the kingdom, you are to do the one another's. In other words, you are in relationship to one another. And so you love one another, you pray for one another, you, you, you submit to one another, you encourage one another, you bear one another's burden over and over and over again because salvation is relationally inclusive. It includes me and somebody else. And there's a spiritual connection and bond between me and other people in the body of Christ because I am sensitive to the other person. Now here's what he says. He says, accept Accept each other the same way you were accepted. This whole piece began at, at, uh, on the day of Pentecost. Some of you guys remember the day, uh, day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, the Bible says they were all in one place on one accord, kind of like a place like this, see? And the Bible says, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact uh, it was in a, traditionally a place called the upper room. It's there today. I've been there several times. And, and so historically, uh, in this room is where the power of the Holy Ghost came. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, they were there in one accord, one, one mind, etc. And the power of God fell. Matter of fact, one version says, they were all filled. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. And then it goes to describe, listen to me, describing that gathering in Acts chapter 2 with a word that Paul coined. Paul made up a term. He called it koinonia. It really means fellowship and community. There's our word. So that on the day of Pentecost, by the power of the Holy Spirit, there was a new community created. There was a new spiritual entity, if you will. And it was called the Church of Jesus Christ. Now, the, all the, all the persons, everybody who was there had a common faith and a common Savior. And they were conscious of one another. They knew somebody was in there with them. And God began to spiritually build, listen to me, build a bond between those who were there forming a spiritual community. That's what I want you to see. That community is where they affirmed each other, encouraged one another, protected one another, shared with one another, met one another's needs. Because they were not only connected vertically to their Christ, they were connected horizontally to each other. Now listen to me. Here's the essence of everything I'm going to say right now. I believe the church today has lost the value of what happened at Pentecost. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is what made the difference from Acts chapter 2 forward. We, we, we often, especially we, we charismatic Pentecostals, we have traditionally emphasized baptism of the Holy Spirit as a baptism of power. 
power to live, power to succeed, power to overcome, et cetera, power. Listen to me. And it is power. But I make the argument. I just picked this up. I've never seen this before, you guys. I just got this reason. I couldn't wait to tell you all this. I just learned this. That I think what we've missed is it was not only a baptism of power. It was a baptism of love. That's why you and I know some folk who've had the baptism of the Holy Ghost and they mean and nasty and... That's why I don't get impressed by all my friends, who, all the folk that speak in tongues. You speaking in tongues to the Lord and you cussing me out in English. I mean, I ain't saying, I mean, I'm just saying. Something wrong with that picture, y'all. And as Paul would say, I speak in tongues as much as more than any of you. <laughs> but, but my point is, we've lost the dynamic of, of, of love. And that's what happened. That's what bound them together on that day of Pentecost. And so then, then, then the Lord says, now, uh, accept each other, accept each other the way God accepted you. Don't rush past that. He says, accept, receive, affirm, acknowledge, encourage one another in this new community. Because God accepted you. Now watch this. The very exhortation assumes that they have accepted Christ. Don't miss that. The context implies and assumes that they are already here. Which means they got saved the same way you did. There ain't no backdoor salvations. Some of y'all old enough remember the song, you, you must come in at the door. Remember that? Remember that? So, so here, here's the point. The assumption of the text is these, he's referring to those who have come to salvation just like you did. And so whether it was called, whosoever shall call, whether it was whoever shall believe, wh 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 whichever way you came in, that's the way they got in. Now, the problem ain't them getting in. The problem is how y'all how we receive them after they get in. Now, 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 let, let, let's get this straight. They can come in. How you know that, Bishop? For God so loved the world that whosoever, they, they can get in. This text says the problem is not them getting in. The problem is how do we treat them once they get in and we forget the fact that they got in the same way we did and so we ought to accept them the same way God accepted us. Am I going too fast? Are you, are you guys with me on this one? This is tough, y'all. Y'all help me, okay? And so he says we ought to accept them. Now watch this, watch this. The word accept, God, I love your word. The word accept is a very dynamic, dramatic word. It, the word is a compound word. It means, it means to bring or call unto yourself. I'll give it to you again. It, mean, it means to, to bring or receive into your life. Say it again. It means to receive and place them alongside your life. Say it another way. It means... To accept them, receive them into your society, into your life. Say it another way. It means, it means to, to bring them to a place where they're standing right alongside you. Let me say it another way. It, it means you receive them into your life, you place them next to you, you place them in your life beside you. And you acknowledge them, you affirm them, and you put your arm around them only to discover it's a man wearing women's clothes. Now what you going to do? Because he came in in the same clothes. 
Did anybody hear that rat that just, that just tripped over this cotton patch over in our did, did, did I know it's quiet, quiet. Did y'all hear that? It was so quiet in here. I heard that rat. There was a rat right over in the corner. Call the exterminator. I just heard a mouse in this corner right on y'all's side. Over here, y'all. So the mouse went. Mm. <laughs> that little girl said, no, not me, not me, not me, not me. No, watch that. Watch, watch that. Watch that. Because they came in the way we did. The issue is not whether they can be saved. The issue is how do we receive them? And so, so the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, accept them in the same way that God accepted you. And God accepted you by grace. Not because you met the criteria. Not because you got eight out of ten and you passed the test. No. God received you by grace. And, and the body, of, listen to me, the body of Christ is a revelation of the incongruity of grace. The, the incongruity, grace is, is, has a dimension where it's in the incongruity of test, which means this. It's matching grace with something that doesn't deserve to be matched. Try it again. The, the incongruity of grace is this. He saved people. He, he, he redeemed people. Who, who for all practical purposes shouldn't have been saved in the first place. Because he didn't save you when you got your stuff together. The Bible says that God so loved us that in while we were yet sinners, I got a news flash. God only saves sinners. The, the, the only folk that will get saved are folk that are sinners. Now, if that's not you, I ain't talking about you. But if anybody realized that we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, if there anybody realized that all have sinned, there ain't nobody on the other side of all. Now, maybe you didn't do what I did, and I didn't do what you did, but you did something. Maybe your thing ain't my thing, and my thing ain't your thing, but you got a thing. All God's children got a thing. And God says, whatever your thing was, he loved you enough to look past your faults and see your need for salvation. And just the way he brought you in, that's the way you got to learn how to receive somebody else. Lord, help me today. Now, now, here's our problem. Because the text says the issue is between the Jews and the Gentiles. Which means they didn't like each other. Matter of fact, they hated each other. Didn't get along. As a matter of fact, there are passages that were said they were enemies. And our problem is we struggle with the sovereignty of grace. God says, God says in the book of Hebrews, he says, he says, listen, listen, let me tell you who I am. I'm the Lord. And I will have mercy on whosoever I want to. I kind of ebonicize that. He didn't say it like that. But, he said, but I will have mercy on whom I shall have mercy. All right, y'all didn't get that. H has anybody ever uh, kind of got upset when God blessed some folk that hurt you? <laughs> you going to heaven because you admitted it. All, all the rest of them lied. They don't, they, they don't say Here's the problem. He's saying God is blessing your enemies. But he received them the same way he received you. And that's kind of a problem. Okay, in, in, anybody remember Jonah? Remember that story about Jonah? Jonah, I, I accepted my call to ministry on a sermon about Jonah. It was called, You Can Run But You Can't Hide. And, and it was about Jonah. This, this was a true story. And, and here's, God said to Jonah, go down to Nineveh. That's a little city. Go down to Nineveh and tell Nineveh if they don't repent, judgment is coming. That's his assignment. God said, Jonah, now go down, go down that little village down there and you tell them that I said, if they don't repent, judgment is coming. Jonah said, well, they can go to hell as far as I'm concerned because I ain't going. <laughs> Jonah said, I ain't going, man. I ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. And the whole book of Jonah is Jonah said, they can go to hell. I'm going the other way. And, and he started running from God. 
All right, all right, y'all didn't get that one. There's a, in, in about, I think about Luke 9, something like that, uh, disciples go into a city in Samaria, and, and they get locked out, and they wouldn't receive them. And, and John, John and, and, and James say, say Lord, no, okay, look, we ain't got to take this. They must not know who we are. Let's call down fire. Let's burn this whole house down. Jesus said, whoa, slow your roll, man. Wait, 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 wait. Back up, back up, back up. If they won't accept us, let's just wipe them out. We don't like them no way. <laughs> David prayed. Da David, David, David asked God to destroy his enemies. So I get it when we struggle with that. Because we forget the sovereignty of God. He's a God who can save anybody. My friends, the, my friends, the, uh, the Williams brothers, Williams brothers had a song out, said, Lord, if you can save anybody, if you can use anybody, you can use me. Because it's about the sovereignty of the grace of God. And here's what God says. When they come in, and they came in just the way you did, don't think about them. Think about how God saved you. Think, think about what he forgave you of. Think about how you messed up. How, I don't know about y'all, but when, 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 Lord, when Lord came into my life, I was jacked up. Now, y'all been spiritual all your life, so I ain't talking to any of y'all. But, but I, that's why the Bible says, while we were yet sinners. I know, listen to me, I know the weight. I know the depression. I know the suicidal temptation when you failed when you've messed up big time I know when you have jacked your life up so bad when you've hurt people so bad when you've gone so far down the road I know what it's like to sense the seduction of suicide because your life is so ungodly but God anybody have any but God testimonies anybody look at your life and see I was on my way to hell but God my life was messed up but God I don't know what I was gonna do but God I didn't like myself but God I wouldn't have saved me but anybody got some but God testimonies up in here up in here up in here and so God and so God God says you accept them God, I love it. The same way I accepted you. I don't know about you. I should have died. I should have been crucified. I should have hung on a cross in disgrace. <laughs> but Jesus... God's son he took my place and I will spend the rest of my life giving thanks and praise unto him for the benevolence and abundance of his unmerited unjustified incongruent grace on my life and so here it comes the Bible says that the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. Listen to me. I suggest to you that the church and maybe many of us, if not most of us, of the charismatic Pentecostal persuasion, we have placed so much emphasis on the baptism with power that we miss the baptism of love. I'll give it to you again. We place more emphasis on the baptism of power, which it is. And we have minimized, if not eliminated, the baptism of love. Uh, 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 R R Romans, chapter five, Romans chapter 5, about verse 5 says this. It says, and the love of God, God, I love this verse. Love of God is poured out 
in our hearts. Don't miss that. Salvation is baptism of power, yes, but it's also baptism of love. And God has poured out like a, uh, uh, like, 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 like a, like a gully washer, like, 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 a, like a, a downpour. He has poured out into our lives, into our hearts, the love of God. We, church talks about a lot of power, but we don't talk about a whole lot of love. If you, you, y'all know that song, y'all know that song, we are soldiers in the army of the Lord, you know, remember that song, I'm a soldier in the army, remember that, you know, let me tell you about this army. This is the only army that will shoot its wounded. You get wounded in this army, we're going to kick you to the curve and blow you away and move on down the road to somebody else. Because God says we are to accept one another as he accepted us and then he says when we accept them it brings praise to God it brings glory to God ba- ba- some, some of us some of us are from um, a baptistic background see I had to talk about my Pentecostal background here's my baptistic background and some of us from the Baptist church and, and Baptist church uh, no, no service would ever end, see, no service, without somebody saying, the door is open. Always wonder how long it's been closed. But anyway, they say, the door is open, the door is open, see. And they say, the doors of the church are open. I have some friends. I have some friends who would stop at the door and say, is it open for me? Is it open for me? God says, I'll save them. You receive them. I pray, I pray, listen, I pray a fresh anointing over this house. I pray a fresh Holy Ghost baptism. Not just an anointing of power, yes. But a baptism of love. Let that simmer. I pray a fresh outpouring. Some of you have friends. Let's go all the way home. Some of you have relatives who you are hesitant to invite to your church or you assume they won't even come to your church because they will stand at that door and wonder, is the door of the church open for me I pray Lord help me a fresh fresh anointing an anointing of love and the Bible says the Bible says God says I'll save them you receive them and when you come in I accept them I receive them I bring them into the life of the church. I affirm them. I don't deny. I don't deny their stuff. How can I deny their stuff when I got my own stuff? I don't deny it. I don't deny it. I don't minimize. I don't water down God's standard of of, of holiness and sin. I don't do that because I'm still struggling for it myself. But, but I, do, I, do want, I do want to obey God when he says, I receive them and I look over to my shoulder and I see them and I welcome them. Or I go to my beauty salon and I welcome them. Or I call my beautician and I welcome them. 
I look in my choir and I welcome them. Because God says he pours out a baptism of love. Watch this. Bible says in Psalm 92, it says, he says, he says, I shall receive a fresh anointing. That's what I pray for this house. Watch this. A fresh anointing. And then he paints a picture of what that anointing looked like. He says, the anointing begins at the head. Begins at the head. I've asked God for a fresh anointing. As I, as I, as I have for 40 years stood in this house as spiritual head of this house. Because it begins with the head, I'm asking God for a fresh anointing. Some of you, some of you know this story. You've heard it before. Uh, it started off being a story for truth. And now this thing is kind of a myth and not a legend, whatever. Here it is. Some of you know this. Uh, a young man, young man calls his mother and says, Mom, I need to talk to you. You've heard this, some of you. And he says, sit down. It's, it's very important. I want to sit down. And the mother sits down. She's kind of nervous, you know. And the boy says, the boy says, Mom, I got to tell you something. Says, uh, I have cancer. And, and the mother says, oh, oh, cancer, cancer, cancer. Mother says, whew. Says, I thought you were going to say you're gay. And the boy says, I am. She would rather him have cancer than be gay. She said, oh, oh, whew. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you were gay. He says, yeah, mom. Fresh anointing. I, I've never met, I've never met, I've never met, I, I, if, if I, I promise you, if I ever meet him, ever meet him in person, I'm going to say what I'm going to say to him now, and I know, know he ain't even listening. I, I heard an interview with um, Billy Porter, Billy Porter, Billy Porter, and at the end of the, he was receiving some kind of award, at the end of the, end of the conversation, uh, uh, the interview, Billy Porter said something about his church and how his church had wounded him, and Billy Porter said, that's a conversation we need to have. If I ever meet Billy, and I don't know Billy Porter, on behalf of the church in general, on behalf of the black church in particular, I'm going to get to that next week, I want to apologize to him for how the church has wounded him and his colleagues. He said, it bruised me. He writes it in his autobiography. Watch this. The anointing starts at the head and flows down, 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 down. The Bible says the anointing gathers, the oil gathers at the hem, at the hem, H-E-M, at the hem, the lowest part of the garment. It starts at the head and it flows down to the lowest part of the garment. Now listen to me. When they're anointing people, they don't take a rag and wipe the, wipe the oil off. They let it flow, they let it flow, let it flow, let it flow to the down to the lowest part, the lowest part, the lowest part of the garment so that the greatest concentration, the greatest power of the anointing is not at the head. It flows down. The greatest concentration is at the lowest point of the garment where the, where, where, where the power and the, and the oil concentrates and gathers and gathers so that the strongest, the most powerful point of the anointing is not at the top, it's at the bottom. Now, Jesus says, as much as you've done it to the least of these, the left out, the left out, he says, as long as you've done it to the least of these, those who are at the lowest point, those who are in the margins, God says, you've done it unto me. Fresh anointing. Jesus comes into the church and he sees all this kind of stuff going on. He said, what in the world is going on? And he, and he start throwing over tables and birds start flying and money start. He said, he said, wait a minute. What? Wait, 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 wait a minute. This is my house. And Jesus says, my house, and it is my house. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. That's my prayer for this house. That we would be a house of prayer where everybody is welcome. Yeah. They may get shit out. Send them over here. Send, send, send. Br bring, them bring them over here. Bring them over here. Bring them over here. Bring them over here. Open the doors of the church over here. 
because God tells us to accept them and love them and minister to them and serve them and cover them and carry their burden and walk with them just the way people do with us. Those of you who will not be here next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you so much for coming in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm ready to close. That's my prayer for us. That was about the church. Next week, I want to close. I want to speak to you if you're a parent. I want to speak to you if you're in this community. I want to speak to you if you have a friend. I want to speak to you if you don't have a friend, but you just need to know about it anyway. What does the Lord say to that man or woman who comes through that door? What does God say to that man or woman who loves the Lord? What does God say to that man or woman who loves the Lord's church? And yet they've been abused and misused. And as one writer said, especially by the black church, they've been exploited. Because we'll damn you to hell out of the sermon and then we want you to sing behind us for the A and B selection. I ain't got time for that right now. That's a whole other message. I ain't got time for that right now. <clears throat> And so I pray for a fresh anointing. Think I want to do it like this. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. I think there's, I want to do it like this. I want to do it like this. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this, this is tough, y'all. <laughs> I will one day stand before God and I will have to give an account for 40 years at this house. One of my dearest friends in this city the pastor of the West Angeles Church of God in Christ. I won't have to answer for West Angeles. I don't have to answer for the city. I only have to answer for this house. And when I stand before God, I want to hear him say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. I pray a fresh anointing over you. I pray that God would soften your heart. Next week, I'm going to talk to them. And I'm going to close with a time of prayer like this. I just want them to know if God can save them, we can accept them. They're welcome here. I want to close with prayer. I, I couldn't, um, I didn't have a, a song. To, I, I, I got stuck here at prayer. Um, I want every person in this house to know, believe, and sense that God loves you. That's my prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ,
Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. We are the clay. Mold us and make us after your will. While we are waiting, yielded and still. Make this house a testimony of your baptism of power and your baptism of love. Let this be a healing station for those who have been ostracized, those who have been marginalized because of the hardness of ungodly hearts. Bless those who have been wounded even by loved ones and rejected by parents and separated by friends because of the pull and the orientation that they struggle with. I pray your blessings. Use us as instruments of healing and love and deliverance. May your love reign here. May your grace reign here. May your blessings reign here. May your truth reign here. And we will give your name honor, praise, and glory. In the matchless, marvelous, miraculous name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. See you next week. God bless you.